I've seen some of the most reputable trainers and the most reputable people on YouTube talking about how they sincerely do believe that you can build muscle when you are in a cutting phase, while you are in somewhat of a deficit. And part of me always believed that, but another part of me looked at thermodynamics and was just like, ah, it's, it, it's not really possible, right? But the more that I started to learn about muscle protein synthesis, the more that I've started to learn about exercise and muscle building just in terms of resistance training as a stimulus versus just a simple mathematical equation, it really started to make sense. So what I want to reference is a very, very interesting and powerful study that was published in FASEB Journal. And it took a look at subjects that ate three different protein quantities. 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram, 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram, or 2.4 grams of protein per kilogram. Very interesting study because they had them for 31 days eat this amount of protein. For the first 10 days, they had them eat at maintenance level. So they ate at maintenance calories for their body weight so that they wouldn't gain or lose weight. And then the following 21 days, they didn't just go into an ordinary deficit. They went into a 40% caloric deficit. So it was time to seriously lose weight, right? Okay, 40% deficit is beyond what I would generally recommend. But what they found is that muscle protein synthesis stayed the same from maintenance into caloric deficit phase for the groups that had the high protein, the 1.6 gram and the 2.4 gram. What that means is that they stimulated the same amount of muscle growth, the same amount of muscle protein synthesis in a 40% deficit as they did when they were at maintenance calories. That means if you're eating a lot less, but as long as you are considerably increasing protein, and I mean like bumping it up a fair bit here, you can actually have the same amount of muscle protein synthesis. Does that mean that you're going to build gobs of muscle? No, and there's probably an argument that you could probably end up not building as much muscle as if you were also in a surplus, right? So we do have to give a thoughtful nod to that situation. But we have to look at a lot of different things. Exercise is a stimulus for one of them. And how you get the protein, what was interesting is that this study didn't matter whether it was plant-based protein or whether it was animal-based protein. We all have our biases on certain things, but getting the protein in. I, I put a link, by the way, down below for Sun Warriors Active Line Protein, because I know people ask in the comment section after I do these kinds of videos, like, what kind of protein do I use? Nine times out of 10, I'm eating whole foods as much as possible, but if I'm going through a cutting phase where I need to increase protein, I'm very particular about the kinds of protein that I get. I do like whey protein, but the reason that I go for Sun Warriors is usually just because I like the hybrid blend with the pumpkin seed protein and some of the hemp and some of the other pieces. And their active line has probiotics in it, but it also has enzymes in it that help with the digestion. But it's not synthetic garbage. It's made from whole foods. It's made from really wholesome stuff with some MCT oil. It's, it's almost like a meal replacement that's relatively low fat and low calorie too. So that link down below will save you 20% off Sun Warriors Active line. Plus they also have creatine and other things like that as well. But anyway, that link down below 20% off to try their Active line protein. And a big thank you to Sun Warrior for the support. So check them out after this video. So what's interesting is when you look at more data, and I had an amazing doctor, he's a MD, PhD, Dr. Tommy Wood on my channel uh, not that long ago. The guy is just amazing when it comes down to this stuff. And he was explaining how exercise, muscle like resistance training is the most potent stimulus for muscle preservation and even muscle growth outside of nutrition. So one of the things that I notice people do is psychosomatically, they get a little bit lost in the shuffle when they start reducing calories. And they even psych themselves out to the point where they're not training as intensely. To a certain degree, psychosomatically, we psych ourselves out because we reduce calories and we feel like we don't have as much strength in the gym. When in reality, if you talk to a lot of even the high level athletes, and if you wanna get granular with even professional bodybuilders and things like that. Obviously, I know there's exogenous things at play there. We don't need to go down that rabbit hole, but they will claim that like their strength can maintain relatively well, even when they're reducing calories, as long as protein is matched and as long as the intensity continues to stay high. So exercise and resistance training is not just this mechanical thing that we used to think it is. Like 
we lift things and we tear down muscles and that's it. Exercise is a signal and it is a signal that that muscle is relevant to survival. And I talk about this when I'm talking about intermittent fasting a lot, but not necessarily from like a muscle building or cutting perspective for more of the fitness community. When you are consistently reminding your brain and reminding your organs that muscle is required and is very necessary, it will prioritize the preservation of it because it's not just a biomechanical tool. It is a literal organ that is a secretary organ that secretes things like myokines and exokines, uh, exokines and all kinds of other things that play a role with this. So we need to pay attention to that. So the muscle protein synthesis, since we know that it stays the same in a caloric deficit as it does at maintenance, that means if you can actually train harder, if you can find the willpower to train harder during a cut, you could potentially build decent amounts of muscle. And there was another study, I can't remember exactly where it was published, but it took a look at that. It took a look at subjects that were doing high intensity interval training along with resistance training in a caloric deficit and they still built muscle, but we weren't able to really understand the full data why. So now when we look at the equation as far as like the thermic effect of food is concerned too, there's a study that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that demonstrated that protein, before we used to think was like a 15 or 20% increase in metabolism when you consume protein, now they're suggesting 20 to 35%. And that again is universal, whether it's animal-based or plant-based. The protein simply put as a macronutrient, just putting away all the other micronutrient discussion aside. That tells us that when you're doing a cut, it doesn't matter all the stuff you pay attention to. As long as you get your protein high and put yourself in a deficit and train harder, as Greg Doucette would say, than you did last time, right? You have to train hard with that, otherwise it doesn't really matter. There's other evidence that's showing now that protein consumption is actually going to crush ghrelin levels in a very positive way, keeping you satiated for a long time. So I don't need to talk about the benefits of protein for satiation and for overall diet. So it does look as though as long as you are getting enough protein and having adequate stimulus, you can indeed build muscle or at least increase and maintain muscle protein synthesis while you were in a serious deficit, up to 40% at least on paper. And that's about 20% more than what most say bodybuilders are doing when they're cutting. So as always, keep it locked to here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.